Winter Gardens TV. In this month's episode, we talk to Katie Edgar, who tells us about Legally Blonde, Russ Egan gives us an insight into the 80s weekender, and we take a look at what's coming up this month. But first, an exciting new membership opportunity. Here at the Winter Gardens, we're excited to announce our new membership. We'll have four specifically curated memberships starting at just £12.50 per person per year. The under-26 membership at £12.50 allows you to enjoy £15 tickets to selected shows, early booking privileges and access to member events. The Winter Gardens member package at £15 unlocks exclusive ticket deals not available to the general public, priority ticket access, 10% off at the Empress Coffee Bar and Bistro and partner offers. The Winter Gardens Plus member package at £30 elevates your experience with £25 best available seats to select performances and access to member events, alongside all the benefits of the Winter Gardens member tier. And finally, Winter Gardens VIP Plus member at £55 is the ultimate membership for the ultimate fan. Enjoy all the perks of the Plus membership with added VIP exclusives, including two-for-one offers on selected opening nights and no booking fees. And now, Luke catches up with Steve Mercer, who talks all things Royal Variety Performance and the Royal Family. Let's begin with the very first Royal Command performance that was here back in 1955. We had the Royal Party, which included Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the late Queen. And then we moved on to 2009. And the 2009 Royal Variety performance, again, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, she was here with her party. We had the third Royal Variety performance in 2020. A very different Royal Variety performance. Because of COVID, we had no audience. But if we do go back to 2009, there was no royal box within the Opera House. There was in 1955, but that box was removed for a production of Cats. So where were the royal party going to sit for the 2009 Royal Variety performance? Let me show you. Once the audience had been seated for the 2009 Royal Variety performance, the royal party came down the stairs and walked along the front of the dress circle where I am now. And it was here that they had their new royal box. And it included the area that we're now stood in. And the reason I've stopped here is because I want to ask Jed. Jed Mills, who was a presenter on our local radio station, Radio Wave. And you spent a lot of time here during the 2009 Royal Variety performance backstage conducting interviews. Yeah, and it was very much a sort of a once you were in and back, you could not, for security reasons, leave the building. It was all sort of blocked off. Yeah. But the interviews that we did, um, and, and as you know, we have some great shows at Winter Gardens and other theatres, so we had lots of stars coming to the radio station. But this was the likes of Bette Midler, Lady Gaga, Michael Bublé was probably one of the biggest artists around of 2009. Yeah. And then if anyone remembers Miley Cyrus, who was of Hannah Montana, yes. and starting to then transition into the Miley Cyrus, um, you know, we were interviewing all those people um, backstage and, and just, they were so, you know, these were huge starts, yeah. but they were just so, lovely and welcoming and also just wanted to be here and loved I would say being outside of the London bubble if that makes sense it does because here. everything to do with the Royal Provarity performance has always been known as being in London mm. people forget that it has left the big city mm. and coming to somewhere like this I mean we are talking a 3,000 seat auditorium it is a huge audience but the likes of Miley Cyrus along with Michael Bublé, mm. Lady Gaga. Yeah. You and got we were, to speak to them? We did, and you know, Catherine Jenkins as well. And you know, the, the, just the whole performance was, like you say, it was all about variety. Yeah. But what I remember from that, uh, that evening as it was, was just how lovely these artists mm. were. You came in nervous. I was only a young presenter at the time, so you, know, you were meeting huge superstars, but just how, and not normal. 
Yeah. It, it was the, probably the best way to describe them. They were so normal, made us feel so welcome. And we got some great material, which not being in Blackpool, we would never have got. No, not with that calibre of star. Keely, I have to ask. Keely Southworth, you are PR for the Winter Gardens. Yeah. Whatever that entails, whether it's the shows, whether it's something to do with the heritage, whether it's something to do with renovation work, you're involved in it. I am. I feel very blessed. I see a lot of things behind the scenes. Um, I've worked with the Winter Gardens for about 20 years, so I was here for 2009 Royal Variety Performance, which and was amazing. that's the one I want <laughs> to talk about. You spent a lot of time setting up interviews for the media, whether it was our local radio stations, newspapers, or whether it was the nationals who were here as well. How did that work? Where were you based? Were you here backstage on the night trying to run around and sort everything out? I was. I was in flat shoes. Um, <laughs> I think we did about 124 interviews My during goodness. the day. Um, it was about six months in the planning. We used the whole of the venue, so there was a media gallery, there was breakout rooms, there was interview rooms, and my job really was to go and find the superstar, collect them, Shaka Khan in her Ugg boots and Lula in her slippers, <laughs> and then take, make sure they were with the, the correct media for yeah. that time slot, keep it to time, and then deliver them back and then bring the next person. So it was a hugely exciting day. It must have been madness at the same time. Obviously it would have been time to perfection, but everything that was going on, you being able to pull these names out and taking them to the media so that they could interview them, how, how did that happen? I had a timer in my pocket. I used a phone, so I, I, so I didn't run over ever. Um, but, but the media were just amazing, yeah. very understanding of the coordination and efforts that it took to kind of move everybody around the building. And the stars themselves were just hugely pleased to be in Blackpool. It was something really different. Um, so they were all really, really accommodating. It was, it was a brilliant, brilliant day. One that you'll always remember for a long time, I'm sure. 100%. I think, I think the highlight for me was Lady Gaga's sound check, though, um, in the theatre, about three o'clock in the afternoon. They allowed 40 crew in, um, and she was winched up onto her 10-foot high spider piano mm -hmm. um, and sang Speechless, which is about her parents, which is a hugely emotional song, but you could hear a pin drop in here, and it was, yeah, one of the highlights of my career. It will stay with you for a long time. It will. Keely, thank you. So now you know how important the Opera House is when it comes to the Royal Variety performance. It was great to catch up with both Jed and Keely and hear from them what they remember, they, their reminiscences about that iconic performance. Thanks there to Stephen Mercer. Next, a little catch up with Katie Edgar, who provides an insight into Encore Productions and Legally Blonde. I'm pleased to say joining me now is Katie Edgar from the Legally Blonde production. Katie, you're director of this production. Could you just give us a bit of an oversight of what Legally Blonde is for someone who maybe hasn't seen the production before? Yeah, of course. Um, it's about a sorority girl from Malibu who um, is following her love uh, and it leads her down a path of um, becoming, training to become a lawyer at Harvard University of all places um, and actually along the way she finds out her skills um, as a lawyer are much more important and her allegiances lie with friends and less so with her love interest and goes on to be a successful uh, lawyer. So you're with Encore Productions, just talk to me about their involvement with the Winter Gardens and how important it is for the general Blackpool area to have productions like this on. Um, Encore is, uh, is in partnership with the Winter Gardens uh, and the idea, the concept behind the company is to provide opportunities for primarily the local talent and the local young people um, of the town and the surrounding area um, but who perhaps may not have the access route through, um, through to where they would like to be in the professional world uh, and our kind of role in, in all of it is to give them that platform, that stepping stone um, and, and also allow them to experience things that perhaps they um, wouldn't normally be able to in an environment such as the Winter Gardens. And just touching on that, um, how important do you feel these amateur productions are, especially to a town like Blackpool? They're absolutely crucial. The professionals come from the amateur world. 
um, they've all gone through that themselves and they you know they would have been loyal to their local amateur company at some point um, and through that is where the talents are nurtured and then passed on into the big bad world and the amateur companies in Blackpool are amazing um, and we just really want to keep the talent in the town um, and have our own kind of semi-professional environment to allow them to experience it before you know letting them go into the world. And this is of course classed as a, a, an amateur production what might be a little different from the main productions that you see come in to, to the town? What's, what's sort of unique about this show? The first and foremost, they're, they're not paid. They're, they're, they're not professional, therefore they're not earning a wage. Um, they've all got other jobs. They all are, you know, one's, one of our leads is a vet, a teacher, a police officer. You know, they're coming from all walks of life to, together to do this production. Um, I suppose they've not necessarily had the formal training that those in the professional world would have already had. And also, like I touched on before, they've not had the access, I suppose, to, to the training and to the kind of experiences. Um, however, that aside, whilst it is an amateur production, I'd say what you will experience and what you would see is a very professional um, outlook in, in terms of standards, in terms of set, in terms of costuming, in terms of the visuals as well. And it's great to be in a venue such as the Winter Garden, so sure, but performing at the Opera House where there have been many, uh, many you know, productions from the West End arriving, that must be so special as well. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, and I don't think for one second that they, they take that for granted, the people who are in this cast. They're, they're absolutely crazily excited to perform. In, uh, you know, in the same capacity, they're, they're terrified. It's a massive big stage with a huge big audience um, and everything and expectations are there as well, you know. But what they are is that they're hugely grateful for the opportunity. And I think more than anything as a director sat back watching will be, it will just be amazing to give them that opportunity to, to step on the same stage as, as you say, some of the greatest have been. Well, tickets are still available. So head over to the website to see Legally Blonde come in to the Winter Gardens this month. Katie, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And now, Russ Egan talks all things 80s Weekender. This month, the Empress Ballroom will turn back time for the 80s Weekender and DJ Rusty Egan will be supporting both nights, the Friday and Saturday. And Rusty joins me now. Rusty, talk to me about what we can expect to hear and see at the weekend. Uh, well, I did the Heaven 17 UK tour uh, just like a couple of months ago, um, playing everywhere, Newcastle, London, Birmingham. And basically, I do a non-stop electronic synth pop mix of uh, all the great 80s records that I was playing. Uh, I made one or two myself. Um, and I uh, hopefully do it quite well. <laughs> <laughs> so predominantly, the, these sort of gigs are aimed at the 80s but this event will sort of have something for for everyone won't it it'll have influences um <coughs> the 80s well um i did drop a record by camel fat on the tour um who are a current dj ensemble and they had taken um it's more fun to compute by Craftwork and made quite a great dance record out of it and as I said, I do mix them, and I always did mix at the beginning and made quite a few electronic dance records myself. So I tried to um, I tried to play to the crowd, knowing they know every record, but sometimes they don't. And I'm quite surprised, like something like Nowhere Girl by um, B-Movie, come from up north, and I'll be up north playing it and they'll be like, oh, I don't know it, I don't know it, <laughs> you know. So I'm quite shocked, really. I don't want to just do, we'll always be together and, you know, it's leave that to the cheesier people. And I think that's why Mark is very happy I'm there. And uh, Heaven 17 couldn't have been nicer and more complimentary, really. You can go to my mix cloud where all the gigs I did with Spanner Ballet the whole tours I did with them. You can listen to the sets and the same for Heaven 17. And then you can listen to all my Bowie mixes, which I make every anniversary, um, January. So I'm a bit of a sort of complete and utter fan of the 80s and have been a DJ 
for many years. And as you sort of just touched on there with um, some more modern day hits, there won't just be classics there. There'll be people like Mark Holman performing their more modern stuff. And just in general, there'll be more modern stuff played at this gig. Yes. Well, Mark Holman did a hell of a lot more than just Tainted Love. And Heaven 17 were also Martin Ware, who uh, was the original music of Human League. Um, so you can expect Heaven 17 tracks, plus Glenn Gregory on that tour, he got out an acoustic guitar. What? He's an electronic performer. I know, but believe it or not, he did a cover version of something that could be quite nice to your ears. So it's not just the same hits. They do actually, um, all of them, uh, drop some really great music. I really enjoyed it. And finally, from a, a personal perspective, how did you get into performing gigs like this? Uh, well, I started my own. I started the Blitz Club and then Club for Heroes and then a few others, and then opened with them um, some northern club operators, Louis Fredericks and George Hendry. We opened the Camden Palace, which today is one of the biggest electronic music clubs called Coco in Camden. And I've been a DJ from 1978 till 1988 and then I owned a nightclub until 95 and I DJed and then I had loads of kids and then I came back uh, with uh, LaRue I did a mix of LaRue and then I was addicted again I was back in mixing remixing I did U2 2018 uh, I wrote uh, some songs with Tony Hadley mid -year, Peter Hook and I just continue to do that. That's it. Well, we are really looking forward to this. And we're really... in the studio now. This is the studio, as you can see. And they've all arrived for a session. And we're working on my new album with Peter Hook, and Tony Hadley, and uh, hopefully have another record out soon. Well, Russ, we're really looking forward to hearing that. And we're really looking forward to you being at the 80s Weekender on Friday the 15th and 16th of March at the Empress Ballroom here at the Blackpool Winter Gardens. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. We have lots of exciting things going on this month at the Winter Gardens with Legally Blonde the Musical taking place between the 6th and 9th. Don't miss out on this fabulous performance filled with catchy tunes, comedic twists and an empowering message. The retake that the tribute band are here on the 15th. The stars are coming out tonight and lighting up the sky tonight for you. As for one night only, the boys are back. The Magic of the Beatles is back for one night only on the 16th. An incredible cast that not only look and sound like John, Paul, George and Ringo, they also generate the same famed and incredible excitement that was trademark of the greatest group the world has ever seen. Also on the weekend of the 15th to the 16th, the 80s weekender comes to the Winter Gardens. And at the end of the month, from the 29th to the 31st, the World Dance Council Amateur League presents the Dance Championship with a range of ballroom and Latin dances taken to the stage. And that's all for this month at Blackpool's Winter Gardens.